What is up guys? It's ya boy Rick coming out of retirement back on that Destiny 2 grind caucus here. Of course, that's a reference to yesterday's video where I said I was quitting Destiny 2 to play a new game, which I thought was a funny tongue-in-cheek reference to the fact that D2 players quit like twice a month anytime a new game comes out, but some of y'all took really seriously. In any event, I got to play a genuinely fun game with my friend M Tash, and uh, it's still on sale for one more day if you guys want to go check it out. But today, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at 10 legendary weapons that you absolutely want to acquire, and that's because all 10 of these weapons are getting substantially better on December 7th when the 30th anniversary event launches as it contains a massive, meta-changing sandbox update. So there's five big weapon buffs I wanted to look at, two weapons per buff, and the first one is to shotguns. Now the first part is actually a nerf. They're gonna reduce the slug shotgun PvE damage bonus from 30% currently to 20%. So slug shotguns are getting worse. And then they gave pellet shotguns a 10% PvE damage bonus. And that leads us right into our first weapon here, the Aikilos SGV-1 or the Aikilos shotgun. So this is a rapid fire frame shotgun. These in terms of damage output are right behind slug shotguns. So slug shotguns are getting worse and these being pellet shotguns are getting better. So it's entirely possible, if not likely, that rapid fire frame shotguns become the new favorite in terms of close range DPS. And the Aikilos is a fantastic option. It can get trench barrel or vorpal weapon in that final slot to make it do even more damage, you know, to a boss. And then it can get, you know, feeding frenzy, lead from gold, whatever in that first slot. And also it can make war mine cells. And even though they've been nerfed, they're still a powerful option to have, so getting a god roll Aikilos is definitely a good idea. But moving on to the second weapon here, also affected by the shotgun change, we have the one small step from the moon that you can farm by completing the same essence over and over. Now like the Aikilos, this is also a rapid fire frame shotgun, so poised to move into that top DPS slot, and just like the Aikilos, it can also get trench barrel in that final perk slot to increase its damage even more. Now it can't get Vorpal Weapon, however, in that first perk slot, it can get auto loading holster to automatically reload when it's stowed. And that is a really, really good weapon, especially when it comes to damage phase strategies, being able to unload your entire magazine of the one small step, switch to something else, maybe a sword, maybe another weapon, and then go right back to this weapon and it's fully loaded. Again, a huge part in DPS strats, even used in raids and so on. And that is better than anything the Aikilos can get. Like the best thing the the Aikilos can get in that first slot is like lead from gold or you know even threat detector whatever it's not going to be as good as auto loading but still these two rapid fire shotguns are absolutely worth going after now moving on from there the next weapon change we're going to look at is to combat bows so what they're doing is that they're increasing the damage versus rank and file enemies so red bar enemies by about 10% now, if you're doing lower level content, this isn't going to make too much of a difference. But if you're using them in something like Grandmasters, where bows have cemented themselves as great options this season due to the fact that they can get overload rounds, this is going to make potentially a big difference, letting them kill a shot sooner. So a great one to go after is the Arsenic Bite 4B, weapon number three. This is a world drop weapon, and holy crap, it can get some phenomenal rolls, including the one I have here, which is Rampage plus Explosive Head. This almost never happens. You usually need to choose Rampage or Explosive Head, and the fact that this can get both is kind of insane, especially because Explosive Head makes stunning Overload champions more consistent. If you don't want that, you can get Rampage plus Archer's Tempo, or Dragonfly plus Explosive Head or Archer's Tempo. There are some really, really powerful options here. Just a great bow all around, and it's a lightweight 
lightweight frame, which is the faster shooting archetype and therefore could benefit most from this damage increase. Now moving on to weapon number four, another bow here, we do have the Accrued Redemption. Now this comes all the way from the Garden of Salvation raid and before you're like, oh, I'm never gonna get this, it does drop in the very first encounter. So you're actually able to just do the first encounter, you get this and a really good fusion rifle also for PvE, and then you can just dip. You don't have to do the whole raid. And this can get the combination of Archer's Tempo and Rampage like I have here, or you can also again get Explosive Head. This is a precision frame, so it's gonna do a little bit more damage, which again could matter in those Grandmaster levels, if, especially if you're fighting something powerful like Cabal. So this is a great weapon to have and kinetic bows aren't too common. Another one, however, is going to be the Biting Winds from Europa and that can also get explosive head. So consider that as well. Moving on from there, the next two weapons we're going to look at are affected by this change to swords, specifically caster swords. So what they're doing is actually they're reducing the cost of a heavy attack from eight currently all the way down to five. And this makes a big difference. To put it into perspective, if you have 50 sword ammo, which is pretty common, right now you can do six heavy attacks, and after this buff, you can do 10. So the first sword on our list is actually the Temptation's Hook. Now this is just a world drop weapon, pretty darn common. You've probably deleted so many good rolls, but specifically the roll I would recommend is something to increase the damage, and then specifically Tireless Blade. This is going to grant sword ammo back for every other powered sword kill, and then Vorpal Weapon. Now, this has received a little bit of a nerf on this same update. Vorpal Weapon will only give you a 10% damage increase on heavy weapons instead of 15, but still, this is a very good roll. What it lets you do is shoot out your caster frame sword, which is again now a lot cheaper to do, and then if you actually kill enemies with that bolt, which is very likely, it actually does a ton of damage, you get ammo back. And that heavy attack, because of Vorpal Weapon, is going to do more damage to the important enemies that you want to do more damage to. Now yes, you could go with the more traditional role of Relentless plus Whirlwind or even Vorpal, however, this role is more built around using that heavy attack, which specifically is the one getting the buff. Moving on from there, weapon number six and the second sword, and the only other caster frame sword, is actually the Sola's Scar. Now this is considerably harder to get, it does come from Trials of Osiris, especially the Adept version, you have to go flawless, However, if you can get the God Roll, you can get Tireless Blade, again for the ammo back, and then I have Thresh here, but you can actually get Chain Reaction. So get a couple kills with your heavy attack, those enemies are gonna explode and do more damage to more nearby enemies, which is going to make your sword shots almost into like rocket launcher shots. That is pretty darn sweet. Not to mention if you do get the Adept version, you can use Adept Big One spec for more damage against bosses and also just yellow bars in general. So yeah, that's a pretty powerful option as well. You're gonna be yeeting out sword slash rocket shots all the time. But next up, we have weapons number seven and eight, and these are both affected by this buff here. Bungie's actually increasing the PvE damage of linear fusion rifles by 10%. These are already completely taking over the meta, especially thanks to particle deconstruction. So holy crap, the fact that they're getting even more powerful is insane. And now you're seriously gonna have to consider replacing your 1K voices with a linear fusion. The first one we have here is the Threaded Needle. This comes from Season of the Chosen, so this is a great one to kind of farm now while you can still go in and get umbrals from Battlegrounds and so on. This can get a, a bunch of different great first perks. You can get Rapid Hit, it can get Auto Loading as you can see, it can get Clown Cartridge, and then you're looking for Vorpal. Again, even though it received a bit of a nerf, it's still gonna increase your damage, and this is just such a solid 
solid weapon. I've used this very one in plenty of Grandmaster Nightfalls. But another one you should absolutely look at is going to be the Reed's Regret. Much harder to get because it comes from Trials of Osiris. You can just get the normal version and specifically you can go for triple tap. In fact, you really should be going for triple tap in that first slot and then you can get Vorpal, but Firing Line is what you want here in my opinion. It's something that the Threaded can't get, and this is actually going to increase the damage by 20%, which is even better than the Vorpal weapons, now 10%. So really something you should consider, and now has pulled even further ahead as the kind of best raid DPS linear fusion if you're not using Focusing Lens. And remember, it also has that Adept version that again can get Adept Big One spec, to just increase the damage to more important enemies. So those are the two linears I would be going for. But moving on from there, something a little different, we're not looking at a weapon buff, we're looking at a perk buff, specifically the perk Adrenaline Junkie. So what Bungie is doing is changing this to match Swashbuckler. So just like Swashbuckler, you're gonna be able to increase the damage by one stack for each kill with the weapon up to times five, but then you can jump immediately to times five if you get a final blow with your grenade just like how you jump immediately to times five with swashbuckler if you get a melee so obviously you do want grenades at the ready when you're using adrenaline junkie but they're not as essential Still, two weapons stood out to me as fantastic adrenaline junkie weapons, and that's going to be, first off, weapon number nine, the Judgment. So this hand cannon comes from the first encounter of the Prophecy Dungeon, and as you can see, it can get Demolitionist in the first slot. That is incredibly rare. We really haven't seen this since Season of Dawn years ago, but that's going to allow, in the second slot, I have Time Payload, which is also incredibly powerful, but instead of that, you can get Adrenaline Junkie. So the combo of Demolitionist to get more grenade energy on every single kill with the weapon and also instantly reload your magazine when you throw a grenade, obviously that's the perfect thing to pair with Adrenaline Junkie. You want as many grenades as possible, and then when you do throw that grenade to get that times five bonus, instantly reloading your weapon is going to give you a full magazine worth of that maximum damage bonus. So again, the judgment with that Demolitionist plus Adrenaline Junkie roll is really, really good and something I definitely want going into the 30th anniversary update. And then the last weapon we have on the list, guys, is another weapon from the Prophecy Dungeon that can get that roll, the Last Breath. Now this comes from the second encounter, the cube room, and I have a completely different role here, but again, it can get Demolitionist plus Adrenaline Junkie. And here, with this auto rifle, like you can have a 50 plus round magazine, so being able to get that, you know, 35% damage increase from Adrenaline Junkie, completely reload, again, all 50 rounds if you have an extended mag perk, that might be even better than the hand cannon, to be honest. Additionally, both of these weapons, even though you have to do the Prophecy Dungeon, are way more acquirable than the only other Demo Plus Adrenaline Junkie roll weapon, which is actually the corrective measure that drops in the Vault of Glass raid. So obviously, I'd take Dungeon, and also a dungeon that you can do over and over again and keep getting drops over that raid any day. And so guys, those are the 10 weapons I'm looking at getting and the rolls before the December 7th update. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, found this informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you wanna get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis, that is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.